This is the homework helper for Chapter 5, Section 8 in the 8th grade textbook entitled Scale Drawings and Scale Models. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 1 through 4. In 1 through 4, the directions are the same. It says that the scale used on a map is a quarter inch is the same as 15 miles. Find the actual distance of each measurement. Now, the quarter inch there might be bothering some people. So one of the things we're going to do here is we're going to change this to 0.25. It's just going to be easier to write when I'm setting up my proportion to solve here. So we know that 0.25 inches, as in 0.25 inches on the map, is going to be the equivalent of 15 miles in real life, meaning every quarter inch on the map is going to be the same as me walking 15 miles. All right. So now what they're saying here is, in number one, that two places are nine inches apart, and we're supposed to figure out how many miles that is. So I'm going to write and solve a proportion here. Uh, we spent a lot of the last few days solving proportions, but we haven't necessarily had to set up that many using the techniques we've had. But remember, when we write a proportion, what I establish the first ratio is is what I'm going to have to do when I go ahead and set up the actual questions here. So 0.25 inches, that's the distance on the map. 15 miles is a real distance. So when I set up ratio number two, fraction number two, and I'm talking about nine inches, nine inches represents a distance on the map. So in this other ratio, because my map number is in the top over here, it's got to be in the top over here. And the bottom, well, that's what I don't know. That's what I'm going to be looking for. So that's going to be x. Now remember, when we're solving a proportion, there's two ways to go about it. We can look for a multiplier that makes life good, may or may not be there, all right? or we can cross multiply and look for the same result. The multiplier is here. It's maybe not that apparent, but it is there. To go from 0.25 to 9, I'd be multiplying by 36. How do I know that? Well, think about what it takes to make 1. I'd start at 0.25, then I'd go to 0.5, then I'd go to 0.75, and then I go to 1. So every 1 is 4 of those. Well, I need to get up to 9 of them. 9 times 4 is 36. And that's how I came up with my 36. Since that multiplier works on the top, it also has to work in the bottom. So I'm going to be multiplying by 36 in the bottom as well. 15 times 36, that's going to give me my result here. 15 times 36 is 540. 540 miles because the unit in the bottom is miles. have to be consistent again. Now, when we look at number two, that scale hasn't changed. We're still using the 0.25 inches as the same as 15 miles. The only thing that's going to change is this part over here on the right side, the second ratio. All right, so now I'm being told instead of being 9 inches apart, those guys are 12 inches apart. So. I'm going to rewrite my second ratio to show that on the map, they are 12 inches apart. And again, my map numbers are in the top, so that's why that is where it is. The bottom, the real number, that's going to be x. All right, let's solve this one by cross products instead. On this diagonal, I've got 15 and 12. So that's a good calculator question, although I hope you know that by now. 15 times 12 is 180. So I'm saying to myself, what would I multiply by 0.25 to make this go to 180. All right, well, most of you are doing 180 divided by 0.25 right now, and that's correct. 180 divided by 0.25 is 720. So those two towns or two places 12 inches apart on the map are 720 miles apart in real life. In 3 and 4, you're going to continue on. I'm not going to do those with you. But again, you're only changing this second ratio. This first ratio will be exactly the same in 3 and 4. All right, in 5, 6, and 7, we're supposed to tell whether each scale reduces, enlarges, or preserves the size of an actual object. So in order to do that there, what you're really trying to figure out is what does the measurement go to? Does the measurement go to something that works out to be smaller? Does the measurement go out to be something that's bigger? Or does the measurement work out to be something that's the same? For instance, number 7 you're looking at, and you already know the answer, because it says 12 inches is a foot. Well, 12 inches is exactly the same as one foot. 
So it's not going to change anything, even though it's a different unit. That one is going to preserve the measurement because they are exactly the same. Now in five and six, we're going to have to think a little bit about this. All right, let's go back to number six because number six has eight inches as a foot, and we already know the relationship between inches and foot. All right, an inch. Well, we know it takes twelve of those to make a foot. Right, so if I have eight inches, right, that means I have two thirds of a foot. So every two thirds of a foot on, let's say my map, whatever, is equal to one foot in real life. Well, because the numbers are getting bigger there, two thirds to one, right, that means the object is getting bigger. So that one's going to enlarge. All right, now let's go back to number five because number five has metric system in it. All right, we're maybe not as good with our metric system until we see that chart that we love. So let's go ahead and get that chart up here. Remember, the met metric system starts with kilo, goes to hecto, then deca, then the unit, meter, liter, or gram, depends whatever the question is about, then deca, centa, and milli. We want to put all of these in the same unit here so we can actually make a good comparison, just like we did in number six when we rewrote the eight inches as two thirds of a foot. So you can either go meters to centimeters or you can go centimeters to meters. It doesn't really matter, you just got to change one. Let's go ahead and change the meter here. To go from meter to centimeter, I'd be starting at the question mark and jumping two to the right to centimeter. So that means I'm going to do the same thing with my decimal here. So I'm going to take one and go twice to the right, and I find out that that's 100 centimeters. So what this question is really saying is I'm going to go from 100 centimeters to 25 centimeters, or 100 centimeters on the map is 25 centimeters in real life. Well, obviously those numbers are now getting smaller, and because those are getting smaller, that means we're reducing the object. some more questions here. We'll scroll down. We don't necessarily have a bunch left, but we have a few more we can look at. Let's go ahead and take a look at number nine. It says on a map, the distance between Atlanta and Nashville is 12 and a half inches. The actual distance between the two is 250 miles. What is the scale? So I'm going to write off my fraction that compares the uh, map distance versus the actual distance. So I'm going to compare the 12 and a half inches to 250 miles. Now what usually happens in scale is that that first number becomes 1. Whatever the top number is doesn't matter. Usually that's the one that becomes one. We say one unit on the map becomes whatever, or one unit in the model becomes whatever. So I can make the top be one inch really easily by just writing one inch. All right, the question is, how did I get there? Well, to go from 12 and a half inches down to one, that means I divided by 12 and a half. So I'm going to have to do the exact same thing to the denominator because, of course, we don't ever change a fraction unless we do the same thing to both the numerator and the denominator. When I take 250 and divide by 12 and a half, the result is 20. So this is going to say one inch is 20 miles. For every inch on the map, 20 miles is actual distance. All right, now we'll take a look at number 10. It says blueprints of a house are drawn to the scale of one quarter inch equals one foot. A kitchen measures three and a half by five inches on the blueprints. What is the actual size of the kitchen? So really this is two questions embedded in one because we have to find the length and the width 
of the actual kitchen. So here we start off with the scale that a quarter inch on the blueprint represents one foot of actual distance. So again, I'm going to write that as a decimal like I did earlier. So I'm going to write 0.25 inches is equivalent to one foot. Which is again, simply exactly what they just told me. I'm writing that down. All right, now they want me to find the length and the width of the real kitchen. So the first thing they tell me is the length of the kitchen on the blueprint, three and a half inches. So I'm going to come over here and write my other ratio. And of course, since that 3.5 number represents the blueprint, and the blueprint is this 0.25 inches, more importantly, it's in the top. When I write my other ratio, it's also going to be in the top. And so the number on the bottom, that's just going to be x. So now we can take a look at this and solve it any way we want. We can do the cross products, or we can figure out what we're multiplying by and using that. Well, as we saw earlier, 